I get a load of messages every week and they tend to fall into one of two camps. Either I just got a new resin printer and everything keeps failing, or I've had my printer a while and suddenly everything keeps failing. Yet there's nothing in between. It's like printers have a grace period and then spontaneously develop a trauma. And these messages nearly always come with the same attachments. Pictures of the exact same kind of failure or screenshots of slicer settings I've seen more times than I can count. And weirdly, the problem's usually obvious once you've seen it enough. Off. So I hope this video helps you, but if it doesn't help you, then, well, at least it'll help me, because now, when someone asks me again, I can just paste them this link to avoid rewriting it for the umpteenth time. So let's crack on. Hi, I'm Ross, this is Farhammer Videos, and all of that's obvious because you can see the channel name below the video. Now, if you've got a resin printer, one of the first things you're told is to dial in your exposure time, and my last video covered exactly that. And yes, I prefer to aim for print success first and accuracy second, because if it doesn't print at all, who cares how accurate it might have been? But yeah, what happens if you're getting the prints that start great and the base layers stick, the supports are going strong, but then out of nowhere, your model looks like it's lost a jewel with a guillotine halfway through printing. Now, in my experience, over 95% of the time I've helped someone with this, the answer is one specific setting. Okay, actually it's two. All right, fine, it's 16. We're talking about lift height and lift speed, yes, just those two, but also the variations for base layer, normal layer, lift, retract. Yeah, so it's 16 in total. And I'm sorry, but fix your printer with these 16 settings just doesn't make a clickable video. So I do what I have to do. Look, hate the player, not the game. All right, fine. Hate the player, I probably deserve it. Anyway, let's talk about what's happening. Most of us know resin printing works by curing layers of resin stuck to the build plate and then after that stuck to the previous layer. The release film at the bottom, the FEP, NFEP, ACF, whatever the release film is called, is designed to be optically clear and not hold on to the resin. You want your cured layer to stick to the plate or last layer, not the film. So, as the bed lifts, the cured resin peels off the film. If it lifts too fast, it can actually yank the print apart. If the lift height is too low, the resin doesn't successfully separate from the film, and you don't create a proper gap for fresh resin to flow into. So, the next layer's got nowhere to go, and when the release film finally does disconnect, you've basically created a void in your model, and that's where the tear begins. Now, here's the sneaky bit, and why it doesn't always happen on new machines, and why it often creeps in after a few weeks or months is because your release film has started to stretch, more than likely in the middle. And why the middle? Well, because that's where every slicer drops the models by default. But again, that's also furthest from the edge, so it doesn't really matter how many models you've got on there, but they will stretch from the edges to the center. The point is, as your film wears, you're more likely to get these kinds of failures. And if you're printing a full plate edge to edge, then surface tension gets stronger because you're pulling away a much larger cured area all at once. But how do we fix it? Well, the simple answer is you slow down your lift speeds and you increase your lift height, not dramatically, sensibly. Now, most modern printers have something called two-stage motion control, or TSMC. If yours doesn't, I probably hate it, deeply, passionately. Except when I don't, but we'll come back to those two examples later. So TSMC lifts the bed in, quite obviously, two stages. First, slowly to gently peel the layer away from the edges. Then, faster to clear the space and let new resin flow in. And it's the same deal in reverse, where the bed lowers, or retracts, fast until it gets close, and then slow to ease the model back towards the screen. Now, Elegoo's new satellite slicer actually has a great pop-up graphic showing this as a visual when you select each setting. I just wish it were larger so you could actually read the text and know what each of the stages represents. But anyway, once you understand what it does, the motion control settings make obvious sense, and you shouldn't ignore them due to complexity. It's actually pretty simple, just a bit convoluted. And the reason there are 16 settings is because, well, okay, you've got two sets of eight. Lift distance for stages one and two with corresponding lift speeds for those two stages, that's four settings, and retract is exactly the same, but in reverse. So another four settings makes eight. But this is also copied between base layers and normal layers. So there's your 16. Now you could have faster speeds for normal layers, sure, but do I bother? Honestly, no. More often than not, I just match them. I'm not chasing speed, I'm dialing in for success. 
Now for anybody asking for the TLDR or get to the point, here's a screenshot of the settings I use on 6 inch, 10 inch and 13 inch printers. These aren't gospel, but they're a bloody good starting point. And I know people will scream in the comments, that's too slow, that's too high. Yeah, I know, you're not wrong, but these settings haven't failed me on a single printer I've tested. And if they ever have, it's not because of the settings, it's typically because the release film is just a bit worn out. So when that happens, I just bump the lift height up by one millimeter for each stage and carry on. And when it comes to speeds, I typically set the stage one lift speed to 60 millimeters a minute because that's the same as one millimeter per second. Easy. Then stage two goes up in multiples of 60 millimeters a minute because that's equal to how many millimeters a second it is. Again, just because it's tidy and makes the math simple. There's no magic behind it, just habits and logic in my head that make it work. But anyway, the point is you should now understand what these settings do and why these problems arise. So feel free to tweak them. And if you've got suggestions, drop them in the comments. That's going to help other people who come here looking for advice. Let's be fair, you as a community are probably much smarter than me. But in fairness, an individual being smarter than me isn't a high bar. Anyway, a quick note before we wrap. Yes, this video was sponsored by Elegoo. I explained how all that works in the last video, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But keep in mind, if you are using the Mars 5 Ultra or the Saturn 4 Ultra, those printers actually use tilting bats, so you don't have these settings. If you do get issues like we've shown here, I don't want you to feel like this was a pointless video for you. So in that case, just switch your printer's tilt mechanism from fast mode to slow mode in the UI, and that should help. But I would love to see a future version of this mechanism that both tilts and lifts and retracts. That would be absolutely glorious. And if you're still having a problem like this, well, it could be layer compression, in which case we need to look at weight speeds. But that'll be another video, assuming Elegoo continue to sponsor me. But anyway, if you've seen someone with this issue, please share the video with them. It might help them, and it'll definitely help me because more views means more content like this, which we both want, right? Anyway, I want to say thanks for watching, and our members are on screen now. Please consider joining for early access, Discord roles, and other nonsense from me. Until next time, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Fohammer out.